Today, I want to take you through the new features that have been released from Microsoft on Teams Rooms on Android. Namely, Update 3, an update we've been waiting for for a long time. So, let's have a look at the features. On the official support documentation, the release notes are published. I'll put a link in the description below. But let's see what we have new. So we select which platform we want, Teams Rooms on Android. And this is an app-only update, so it gets deployed out from the Teams Admin Center. You don't need to wait for it to be bundled from the OEM, such as Neat. It comes straight from Teams Admin Center. So the first one we have is simply walk up and start whiteboarding. So on the home screen, we have the choice now to put a whiteboard icon, and we'll show you how to do that as well in this video. This means you can collaborate straight away without starting the meeting, and then just have the option to delete it, or you're able to invite someone to the meeting, and then it's passed over to their OneDrive. So we'll see that in action shortly. And again, you're able to seamlessly escalate that from a, a non-video meeting to a video meeting, and carry on the whiteboarding. You don't lose it when you escalate. Also, we have the ability for the whiteboard to be used side by side with video. Previously, it would take the whole screen up. Now it just takes up 90% of the screen with some people down the side or a new film strip down the bottom. And again, we'll show you that in action as well. And a content sharing menu has been redesigned because we can now share HDMI or we can share whiteboard in a call and also uh, a new touchscreen support. So if you do have your Neat Bar, for example, or Neat Bar Pro with a touchscreen, you can now have the same feature on like an all-in-one all device like we have with the Neat Board. And also, it allows us to support 4K displays. So this is now running at 4K when we put the latest version on. We're also able to have remote camera pan tilt zoom support. So from your Teams desktop client, it doesn't work on the web or your mobile, it must be on your desktop client, you can add PTZ controls, which means you can control this camera remotely. And this also works whether you're inside the tenant or outside the tenant as well. And then finally, we have joined a meeting room device that's become more inclusive with chat notifications. So by being able to send a message, someone sends a message during a meeting, they're then able to see that message at the top of the screen. So you know that Graham has shared a link. You could then open up your desktop client and see that. This can be enabled or disabled during a call or also from the admin settings in the back too. So this is all the exciting features on the new update. So how do we get it? Well, simply, we head into our Teams Admin Center. We select our Teams Rooms on Android and let's pick uh, room number one, which is what this device is. And you can see it's got a health status non-urgent. We come down to our health down here. And we can see we have an update available for us. So we can choose the Teams app version. So we're coming from the September version up to the December version. And we hit update. Now this is going to send a signal to the device to say, hey, you're doing up to it, upgrade. Uh, if it doesn't do it within seven days, it will cancel that update. We can look at the history and we can see software update is queued. So shortly, in about five to 10 minutes, it will then push the update. It will restart the device. So again, you can schedule the update. So again, using things like um, tags within the Teams Advent Center, you can make sure they're done at a certain time. While we wait for this to be updated, we'll drop out into the device and back to the home screen. So then we'll watch it and you can see how an app update takes place. There you go, that was pretty quick. It's now updating the device, pushing the new Teams app version. And there we have it. I didn't time that, but that was a few minutes. Very quick to update the device. Not even a reboot's required, it just updated. And as you'll see here, we now have the whiteboard icon. But let's have a look at some of the settings first. So we go into the device, into the settings. 
So once we're past the password and we're in the settings, we've also got oh, uh, the new version of Neat Firmware on here as well, which introduces pairing, and I'll show you that last. So we're going to Teams Admin Settings, into our calling. So these are some options that are set up uh, depending on your, on your policy. So for example, I've got auto answer, auto video, our front of room display. So under general, we can choose our wallpaper. If you're using this with a neat bar, you also get a toggle here, display icons on front of room display. So that allows you to use a normal interactive touchscreen. For example, I have a portable 15 inch monitor. I can take to any neat bar and make it touch enabled. Now under meetings, I have some new options, i.e. show chat bubbles so that they can be enabled or disabled. Um, but also I've got an allow room to initiate whiteboard. So if I turn that off, then that would take away the whiteboard from the home screen. Why would you want to do that? So let's head back to the home screen and I can simply hit the whiteboard icon. So now it's starting a whiteboard. And we'll just adjust the color so it's better for the camera. So now I have my whiteboard and I'm able to annotate, draw, and do what I need to do in this session. So for example, I've got my annotations. I now want to save them. If I don't, I'm done, then I can hit stop whiteboard. It will remind you, all your changes will be deleted. However, I want to keep this wonderful drawing. So I start that meeting. So what happens now is it starts the meeting and I've now got my annotations that I've been doing out of the meeting. So the other few things that we have here in this new layout is I can see I have um, the layout here. I can choose content and gallery. I can go full screen gallery or just content. Now, for this to be saved and utilized elsewhere, I have to invite someone. So I simply hit the people icon and I add someone to the meeting. We'll add myself. That's me ringing myself. We're now on the call. I now have the contents of the whiteboard in my whiteboard.office.com account. So it has moved it over and I can actually see it on my laptop down here as well. We have the whiteboard so I can co-create now. So I can safely end this meeting. We're done. We've finished the session. It's now saved on my laptop. We've got that meeting to carry on with at another time. So now let's look at the in-call experience, what we have new in update three. So I have a meeting here. I can simply join. And as you can see, it's pretty busy. I've got some friends in the call already. So I'm showing a different layout. So I've got the option for gallery. I've now got the option for large gallery as well. So again, depending on your license, if you've just got the Microsoft Teams Room Basic, you just get the normal gallery. If you've got the standard or pro license, then we'll be able to get large gallery, together mode, etc. However, what's new is when we share content, I've now got the option for HDMI content sharing, Teams casting, but I also have the new whiteboard. So I can instant, instantly start a whiteboard from my device here. And you'll notice now we have the gallery down the side so we can do the people plus content. And this is the default layout, a major benefit that, that's arrived now. Again, we can see the content in gallery. We can go to the large gallery. Uh, again, you can mix and match. You can go back to your content, for example, and then easily switch back and forth. So again, you can format background so it looks better when you're doing your calls. And then we can go back to our content and gallery. So again, you can, loads of features within Microsoft Whiteboard that you can utilize all natively within the neat board. So the other features we have are chat bubbles. So it's on by default. So let's have a look when I send the message. So I've written a message. Do you like update three? So you see the chat bubbles now on the front of room display on your Android devices. And they are some of the key features now that we have in this latest update. As I mentioned, we have another update. So as part of the integration with Microsoft, we are now able to pair a pad as well. So in the upcoming release of the Neat firmware and in conjunction with the new Teams Room software, we can pair a pad. How do we do that? We simply have to enter our pairing menu. So again, you need your admin password and we hit pairing. So now the device is ready to listen 
for a pad. So I have a brand new neat pad here, or reset, and I choose my setup. And I want to choose add a additional neat pad for meeting control. It's on the network, that's good. And now it's searching for devices, and it's already found the neat board. So I simply say continue. It is now paired, and we continue. And it's now installing the Teams app on there. And again, remember, one thing we need to make sure is that that gets the latest update too. So we want to update three. So we'll see that once it signs in. So we'll drop out of here and we'll go back to our meeting. So just double check. We've checked the walk up and whiteboard. We've got it initiated. We can switch from a ad hoc call or ad hoc whiteboarding session into a meeting. That's good. We can now see the different layouts. We can then also collaborate inside a meeting so we can easily share that. The one thing on the whiteboard is make sure you have, uh, it's allowed to be shared in Teams. I've written a blog post on there, I'll put a link in, in the description to make sure your SharePoint settings are all up to date. Because the devices are treated as anonymous access to that whiteboard. So a few changes you might need to make to your tenant. Touch of room display. So this is this feature now I'm actually gonna show you on here. Um, and also be able to have chat notifications. So there are all the updates, we've covered them. They look great, it's rolling out. So now we're going to do our neat pad. So what we want to do is go into our device and we'll see it pairing in a second. So we're all set and we hit launch Microsoft Teams. So the next thing we do is sign in on the device with the same account. So basic pro standard, you sign in. And because I was on BYOD mode, I had that menu up there, so I want to switch back to Teams mode. So I have the new device here, and I can sign in on here. Or you can use the uh, microsoft.com forward slash device login code. So we're signed in, registered through Intune, Company Portal, etc. And then the first task is we must pair the devices at a Teams level. We've already done the neat level, we also need to do the Microsoft Teams level pairing. So now it's looking for available devices. So it's looking for the same device signed in. It's found the neat uh, device and we input our code. And then we simply have the devices paired now, which means I get the full control on the front of room and on the device here. So I simply can join the meeting very simply from the touch panel but i've still also got my controls here so i can start the whiteboard from the session here so really great to have the two paired now together and just to show you the setting there's a new flag we'll, we will see here in the settings now so we go into our settings so into our teams app and settings and under general as you'll see i mentioned earlier we now have enable touchscreen controls so whether you want to pair a neat pad with the neat board or you're utilizing a front of room touch display, you'll want to make sure this flag is turned on so you can have both. So there we have it. Update three, all the new great features, plus the forthcoming neat software release that's in the preview channel. If you want to get to that preview channel, you simply go into the system settings and then into software update, <clears throat> as you'll see here. The menus have moved around as we've secured it more now. So we go to software update and we make sure we're in preview. And it also tidies up the menu structure. So now users cannot make any changes. It's all safely secured behind the password. Some other great features coming up in the Neat firmware as well, such as USB audio on the Neat bar, 802.1x authentication, etc. And they'll all be announced very, very shortly. They're in the preview. The release notes are online for you to check them out. Any questions, let us know.